Hi there and welcome back to the show. This week we're visiting Gale Banks Engineering here in Southern California. They are the premier producer of aftermarket engine power enhancement systems for SUVs, light trucks and motorhomes. Let's go meet Gale. Hi Gail, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, Stu. Thanks for taking time out from your schedule to give us a tour of the facility. Come quite a long way since uh, you had a one-man shop in 1958. Yeah, but I'm still doing the same thing. It's racing, but it's not racing. We're, we're using the same airflow into and out of the engine technology I've used for 40-some years now in my race cars. Terrific. Let's explain to our viewers what exactly the bank's power enhancement system does here. Well, what it does is removes the airflow restrictions on the intake side of the engine and the exhaust flow restrictions on the exhaust side of the engine. Mm -hmm. Whole idea is amp up the torque peak of the engine that makes it more efficient, better fuel economy, durability, and most of all torque, which pulls you up the hill without back shifting. Terrific, which is relevant to our RV viewers out there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Same technology as racing, only we're not dealing with peak horsepower, we're dealing with mid-range pull. Then it was time to take a tour of the seven-acre facility where the bank's power products are developed and produced. The tubing that we use for most of what we produce today is 409 stainless. Good corrosion resistant material and equal to or superior to what comes on the new vehicles. So you don't take a step backwards with the quality of our product when you put it on. The whole intent of this shop is to control the manufacturing process. That's why it's inside our business. We start with stainless tubing and what's called job length. And what's happening here is they're roll cutting it and then rolling out the, the burr. What we've got here is a CNC automated bending machine. There are three others that, that are with it. We bend anywhere from three quarter inch to six inch diameter with one unique feature. The bend has a mandrel inside so that when it's bent, the tubing is not crushed. After the pipe is cut and bent to the proper length, the next step is the final assembly. We use jigs such that the product is always consistently the same. What we strive for in this business is to have the fit and quality uh, of the original equipment parts. So no one has to build part of our kit or our system in the field. It just bolts on and fits properly. Right, and Gail, here's what you're talking about, that no gaskets are needed, right? Yeah, this is a 454 Chevy manifold, and Eduardo has just milled it flat. This mounts against a cast iron cylinder head with no ga gasket being used whatsoever. And the benefit of that is? The benefit of that is it's absolutely, totally reliable. It does not leak, and you can't blow the gasket because there's none there. Banks Engineering uses the chassis dynamometer to duplicate driving conditions in the field. And basically it allows us to not only measure the power increase that we're seeking, but to measure the fuel economy increase. Which is very important. It's huge. In 1974, I started this part of my business because hmm. of the fuel crunch of 74. I remember those gas lines. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Banks Engineering is also involved in designing new braking systems for vehicles and RVs. And basically, this is one for a Ford diesel. The thing that's unique about our brake is not that it's a brake, but it's how it's constructed. The butterfly is in the outlet of the brake, quite a ways away from the turbocharger that would be right in this area. Okay. As a result, when it's open, the butterfly does not interfere with the rotating gases coming out of the turbine. Well, Gail, I want to thank you very much for giving us a tour. I know you're a busy man, got a ton of things going on. And I was wondering, uh, could you create an RV that goes 200 miles per hour for us? Well, I've done a lot of stupid things in my life. We've gone 432 with our streamliner. We've gone 289 miles an hour with this Firebird. We've gone 204 with a pickup truck, and those are world records. But I don't think I'm that far gone to want to go 200 in an RV, no. 